Morning, all. All right, starting things off today, talking about the Carolina Hurricanes. There's no way that this team is done making moves for the summer. Uh, there's a lot of rumors about them being in on Eric Carlson, rumors about Brett Pesci being on his way out of town, uh, as they can't come to any kind of an agreement on what his extension will look like beyond this coming season. And so, yeah, this is going to be an interesting remainder of the offseason for Carolina fans, I would think. Uh, but if you look at this forward group, it's it's clearly, there's room here. They have $2,520,583 in cap space currently. Um, they, they were 15th in goals for, they need to find more goals. They were second in goals against. Definitely if you add Eric Carlson, that should translate to more goals. If he can have anywhere near the kind of season this coming year that he just had in San Jose. So on the left side, you've got Bunting, you've got Svechnikov. The return of Svechnikov is huge. The addition of Bunting could potentially be a very good signing for them as well. Uh, we saw with Bunting in Toronto that, you know, the officiating turned against him, and that seemed to negatively impact the rest of that season for him. But Bunting could be a very useful top six forward. And again, uh, if he's not on the wrong side of, of the officials, he's he's in pretty good shape. But that's that's a question mark that's out there. Uh, you have Martinuk, who is a UFA next summer. Nason is a UFA next summer as well. Brendan Lemieux just added. It's a one-year deal for him. So some expiring contracts there. Nason's the one that kind of stands out as a player that, uh, you know, has paid his dues in the minors and had a decent season for the Carolina Hurricanes. Played some power play time as well, and so we'll see how things go for him this season. Down the middle, well, you've got Ajo. We know what Sebastian, Sebastian Ajo can do. And if there was a system in place for Carolina where they encourage the offense a little bit more, without giving up the defensive side of it, of course, that second and goals against is something Brindamore would take a lot of pride in. But Ajo, if encouraged and allowed to, to you know, have free reign to score a bit more, uh, that 15th and goals four would definitely not be the case. That would definitely get better. You have uh, Kokanyemi who is improving every year, not necessarily at the rate that people might want, but he is improving every year. He had 43 points this past season. Uh, there's good reason to think he'll be 50-plus points this year. Uh, Jordan Stahl continues to play really quite well, and he's sticking around. Uh, Jack Drury is here, of course, probably ends up getting that fourth-line spot, but Ryan Suzuki is there. Uh, Ryan Suzuki... Good defensively. Doesn't have the upside, obviously, of his brother, but still pretty good player. Uh, Ponomarev is there as well, or Ponomarev, I believe. Uh, Reese is there as well. So down the middle, it, there's some depth here, but again, it just it feels like with Carolina, there's some, some depth guys they're going to pick up. Like, I would not be surprised to see three or four guys added to this forward group between now and training camp on 775 grand, like minimum NHL salary. Uh, contracts. Then you get to the right side, and Seth Jarvis, 14 goals, 25 assists for him this past season, but Jarvis definitely has the ability to score 50 plus, 50 plus points as well. So if Koch and Yemi and Jarvis are able to advance their numbers and Svechnikov is able to be healthy a full season, there's reason to think that the goal scoring will be there. Uh, Natchez had a very good year, uh, not consistent through the full season, but still, again, that's not an unusual thing to see. It's very rare for players to actually be good from games 1 through 82 with no kind of letdown in between. And I would look for further improvement in HS's numbers this season. Uh, fast, he went to market, but stuck around. Uh, and Tara Vinen, 12 goals, 25 assists, 37 points for Tara Vinen. He didn't play a full season, but it feels like his offense has dropped off a bit. He's a UFA this coming summer. Uh, we'll see if he finishes the season as a member of the Canes or not. Uh, Carolina also has Gunler. There's there's some decent prospects here, and we'll see whether or not they get integrated. But again, it does feel like their forward group definitely needs a little bit of something, uh, and I think we'll see some guys get signed. There's definitely some free agents left that can help at the NHL level that won't cost you a ton of money. Then you get to the blue line, and this is where things are really interesting. Now, of course, Tony D'Angelo, at the time I'm recording this, was bought out by Philly, is a free agent, is expected to end up with Carolina. Again, at the time I'm recording this, that has not happened. Could happen today, absolutely. But where does he play? So you have Orlov, you have Burns. So that's a pretty strong tandem. The addition of Orlov could be huge for them this year. 
Uh, you have Shea, you have Pesci. Both of them expiring contracts, UFAs next summer. Uh, and you have Slavin and Chatfield. Chatfield really came into his own this past season and was excellent for them. And of course, Jacob Slavin is Jacob Slavin. So this one through six is fantastic. I'm not sure where D'Angelo would play unless they were going to play seven defensemen or convert him to forward. But at any rate, uh, you have uh, Fensor and Mendel on this side. You have Coglin and Honka on this side. And uh, so Coglin likely to be the number seven defenseman. Uh, again, if you bring in D'Angelo, I understand Pesci is, is very likely on his way out. But there's also that talk about them picking up Eric Carlson. So there's there's a lot of names out there, right? Now, in terms of exits, there are some, some key guys that are missing from the lineup from last year. Stastny exits. Uh, he has not signed anywhere or announced his retirement. So it's possible Stastny gets added to this bunch. Stepan, don't believe he's retired or signed anywhere else either. Uh, DeHaan has signed elsewhere. Uh, Goss Despair has as well. Patch already has. Pugliarvi's still out there. I don't think Pugliarvi's coming back. Uh, and Kasha, of course, has signed overseas. So, and he only played one game. Andre Kasha sadly only got into one game this past season. So there's a lot of reason to think that, you know, there's, there's going to be additions. This is a lot of guys off the roster. Not a ton of additions. Bunting's a big addition, though, and so is Orlov. Um, but when you look at this team, they lost in the second round to Tampa Bay in 2021, second round to New York Rangers in 2022, conference finals against Florida this year. They're not that far off. This is a team that has got out of the second round every year for the last three years. And so they're, they're not that far off. And, and it's a matter of adding the right players. And I think their defense is solid. If you add D'Angelo, you're going to have to trade somebody out to get him some ice time. And again, if they're going to bring in Carlson, they're going to have to make some kind of move as well uh, to make that work. Because cap-wise, even though they have a little bit of cap space here, they don't have that much cap space. Uh, and again, that's even if they're trading a contract back to San Jose to try to even things out a bit. The goaltending is going to be fascinating. Uh, because you have Anderson, you have Ranta, and you have Kachetkov. And all of them are being paid NHL-level wages. And yet... Most teams won't carry three goaltenders uh, during the regular season. During the playoffs, sure, you, you have the ability to have your taxi squad and everything else. But during the regular season, it, it just doesn't make sense to carry three goaltenders. So you have Anderson, you have Ronta. Ronta's just on the one-year contract. And you have Kochetkov. I was surprised to see them bring back both Anderson and Ronta. I had figured that, you know, maybe you let Anderson go. And you have more cap space as a result. Ronta and Kochetkov, that's a risky tandem, absolutely. However, uh, that would give them more cap space in order to add elsewhere. However, they've opted to go with the three goalies. And we'll see how that works for them. Uh, Carolina should still be a playoff team. Carolina should still be a top team in the Metro. It could come down to health. It could come down to... Uh, how many injuries they go through. They can't afford to have another season where Sveshnikov misses significant time with injury. And really, I'll be interested to see if they do make that move for Eric Carlson, who they pick up in that deal with him, if anybody else comes, or what they have to give up in order to make that work. Because again, uh, it's a lot of cap money, and apparently San Jose doesn't exactly feel like retaining half of it. So there you go. Carolina, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Are they still a contender? Um, again, my answer would be yes, but let me know your answer. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.